Hey you guys, welcome back. This is going to be session four of the Bengal cat painting. And in this session, I'll work on darkening the background, adding another layer of color to the cat, refining the stripes, and painting the tail. If you like this series of Bengal cat painting tutorials, you may enjoy my Patreon. That's where I do a lot of videos like this in much more detail so you can see each step of the way and I explain each step of the way. And it's also a great way to support me as an artist if you like my tutorials. That will help ensure that I can continue to do this and expand on my work doing online video tutorials, which is what I really love doing. I love feeling like I'm helping people. And also, in these days and times especially, I think people just need a place to escape and painting is a great way to escape. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I upload videos once to twice a week and hit the little bell icon so that you will get notified via email each time I upload a new video. If you're interested in sharing your work with me and my other students, you should join my Facebook Rachel Parker Watercolor Workshop and that is a group where we just share tips and ideas and our own work and I also let you all know when I've uploaded a new video. I'll put a link below so you can join. So let's get started. Okay, for this clip, I am just going to put in some clear water and darken that background more. It needs to be darkened quite a bit more. <laughs> but also I wanted to start toning down that background and that's the correct use of the word tone because tone is how saturated a color is, okay? So I'm going in with some strong, I mean, ooh, it's strong, some strong indigo blue. It's still a very vibrant blue, isn't it? But it's a lot grayer of a blue than say cobalt or ultramarine blue. And I mixed a little bit of yellow in it down as I went down further. And you see I put the line uh, under his foot that implies a little bit of shadow. And I made that all part of that one wash. So that's one more little point of connection of the cat with the background. So that's a perfect example of, even though it's a small little tiny point, I connected the cat to the background by painting that little tiny shadow under his foot, his back foot with the background. And I'm just putting in a bunch of indigo blue. I was using my Simply Simmons brush up against his face to get in little details. For this particular little painting session, this next clip, I wanted to add more definition to the cat and get his back area that's away from the light darker while keeping the front area of the cat lighter. So I was going in and putting clear water over both the back of the side of the cat and the background because I want the background to create a very soft edge along the back of the cat. In this particular painting session, I wanted to get this edge back here really dark and I wanted it to be really soft, almost to the point where you didn't see the edge of the cat melting into the background. So I wanted to get the dark, the back side of the cat that's facing away from the light much darker. And in this painting session, that's all I'm doing is adding um, to the stripes and um, but also mostly just trying to get this side of the cat darker and to merge in with my background and I'm using mostly burnt sienna to do this and at the end of the session the back side of the cat uh, facing away from the light is a lot darker. I'm using my Royal Lang Nickel size 4 brush to work on the stripes in this part of the painting. And once in a while, you'll see me tap my paper with the back of my hand. What I'm doing is feeling the paper to see how wet it is, because if it's not wet enough, I'm going to have to kind of end the session, let the painting dry completely, and then re-moisten it. All right, and then I'm going to do a second layer of painting in his ear to continue to build up the colors in his ear. And I'm using mostly burnt sienna and quinacridone gold to do that and just continuing to get these to the level of value that I want them to. I always try to get that done in the first painting session, but rarely am I able to. So I usually go back in 
And then I'm just going to add some colors into his fur along his haunches, mostly burnt sienna. Um, once in a while, you'll see me use my finger to move paint around even, and that creates an interesting edge. And then while it's all wet, I'm dropping in some cream consistency, uh, lamp black, and trying to keep that passage really dark and fresh. And there I'm putting in some more lamp black and keeping those stripes as soft and fresh as possible and varying their shapes. And then I dot at some of the paint with my finger to soften edges further as I go. And then along his, his the edge of his leg, he has a really dark shadow. So I'm putting that in with a combination of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue there and really getting it nice and dark and just continuing to build up the little details. Here I'm working in his tail with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, trying to keep it really soft. And I'm going off camera here. Sorry. <laughs> And then to keep the edge of his tail soft right there, you can see I painted in his tail and then where the white of the background met his tail, I went in and painted some clear water to soften that line up because I do not want that to be an interesting line where his very dark tail meets the white of the table. And so I went in with clear water after I put the tail in and I painted up against that edge with just a tiny little bit of water just to soften out that tail a little bit so it merged a little bit, tiny, just a tiny bit into the background so it has a soft furry edge instead of a hard pasted on cutout look edge. You don't want that. All right, and then I just continued to add burnt sienna in some of the passages throughout his fur just to add some pop of color and some glowing um, oranges, and I really liked how that was looking. You'll see I'm going in with my Alvaro casting net brush that holds a lot of water and just moistening up everything quite a bit. I don't know if I videoed the part in the background where I put those stripes in. You see the lower left hand corner on the cat's right, but they were really easy to do. I just wet the background quite a bit and then dropped in a mix of my um, green mix with some indigo blue and just painted some really easy peasy stripes and i like how those stripes are kind of pointing at the cat so i like that and here i'm, I'm painting in some more stripes and i just did them really soft and flowy not too picky uh, because I just want them to kind of accentuate the cat and kind of point the eye back to the cat. So that's how I did those little stripes in the bottom left hand corner. And you see I've got my really wide brush now. I'm gonna get really crazy and I'm just putting all kinds of clear water um, over the cat and the background so everything will merge together. And what I'm gonna do next, I believe, is I'm gonna go in, yep, with my Alvaro casting net brush and with some as much indigo as I can get on that brush. Um, that brush holds a lot of water, so it ends up being tea consistency, even if you put a ton of paint in there, but it holds a lot of paint, so you can do a lot with without having to go back to your palette every few strokes and reloading it. But you can see I just wanted to darken that side of the painting, the right side of the painting, the cat's left are right. Um, and get these passages really, really dark, especially right down in there by his haunches, um, just to accentuate that pretty little shape of his hind leg jutting out. I did want to make sure that's visible. And then I'm going in along his back chest area and putting in indigo blue and letting it all merge kind of into the cat so that it creates as soft an edge back there as possible because that is the area of least concern for the viewer um, as defined by me, the artist. <laughs> but I'm going in with quite a good bit of indigo blue to tone down all these bright colors because I don't want these bright colors of the background that I have to compete with this cat. I want this cat to really glow. And to make the cat glow, we have to gray down the background so the cat comes forward. 
And here I'm going in yet again to add some darks to the background. And I feel like, I was feeling like at this point in the painting that the background was getting too busy and really taking away from the cat because the cat himself is quite busy. So if you have a busy background and a busy uh, cat, it's just going to be boggling to the mind. You don't want that. And while it was pretty, I wanted to tone it down. So what I did was I went in with pretty much pure indigo because I already had a lot of variety of color in the painting already. And I just wanted to tone everything down and kind of pull everything together. And so I went over the back side of the cat that's facing away from the light. And then I just, and then I wet the whole background and I went in with indigo blue and just kind of painted over some of those passages just to calm them down a bit. And then I almost scrubbed across the line of his, his left shoulder, our right side um, with the indigo. And cause I wanted to kind of erase as much of that line as possible where his back shoulder um, on the right side of the painting meets the background. Cause I really want that to be a very soft edge. So I was almost scrubbing with my paintbrush right there to really play down that edge. And you can see at the very end, I really went crazy with the darks and I really think it helped pop the cat out even more. And at this point in the painting, this is where we're at. So I'm gonna get this published and share with you my next bit of progress. Yay! Thanks so much for watching. And in the next session, I'm gonna be doing some hyper real-time, super detailed work on the fur. I'll remove the masking and start refining the details of the eyes and the nose. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.